Hi everyone. In this two-part video, I will be taking a look at the analysis system for GTO Plus. This first video will focus on how to navigate decision trees and most of the analysis system. The second video will look at term reports, locking and editing solutions, and some more details on the play against the solution feature. In GTO Plus, the tree navigator is displayed on top of the interface. Here, 1 stands for the decision for the out of position player, and 2 stands for the decision for the in position player. To see the solution for a decision, just click on it. And the GTO solution for that decision will be displayed in the analysis tool. To navigate to a certain decision, click on the actions in the navigator. For example, let me demonstrate how to navigate to a decision on the river. Let's say that the flop goes check, bet, call. And we now want the jack of spades to come off for the turn. For this, click on the card icon here. And select jack of spades. It's also possible to quick select a card by pressing Ctrl and using the arrow keys. I'll just select jack of spades. And we have now moved on to the turn. Let's say that the action on the turn costs check, check, and the river is the queen of diamonds. I will just click on the card icon. And for the river, you can again just click on queen of diamonds. Or you can use shift, control, and the arrow keys. And there we are. And should you quickly want to switch to a different turn, then again use control and the arrow keys. and use shift control to switch to a different river. A requirement for this quick navigation is that your tree has been solved with extensive storage under Run Solver. The alternative to extensive storage is basic storage. In basic storage, the turn data will not be stored in your save files. The advantage is that your save files will be smaller. The main disadvantage will be that, when you navigate to a turn line, a lively computation is required. I will just demonstrate by loading a different tree that uses basic storage, and navigate to the turn. And as you can see, a few seconds are needed to perform a lively calculation. Basically, if at all possible, you'll probably want to use extensive storage so that everything works a bit more smoothly. Basic storage is really only needed if you want to keep the size of your save files down. An example of this is if you want to send a save file to another user. In this case, should you have a file that's created with extensive storage, and you want to convert it to a tree with basic storage, then you can do so by storing your file with File, Save, Convert to Basic Storage. So, let's move back to the navigator. The navigator has two display modes. The classic approach is line-based, where the flop action is in the top line, the turn is in the line below that, and the river is below that. However, in some cases this can mean that the remaining available area below the navigator is rather small. Should this happen for you, then you can use the toggle here to switch to a more compact display. That leaves more space for the analysis tools. In this case, the flop, turn and river actions are placed in sections next to each other, with the active turn and river cards between them. In the upper right of each turn and river section, you'll find two small symbols. The first one is for resolving a particular turn or river line. If you click it, the solver will be run on that line indefinitely, until you left click to stop and you can use this to achieve a higher accuracy in the selected line. This second icon is an export icon. If you click it, then the select turn or river line will be exported to a new window of GTO Plus. So if I click here for the river, then a new window is created that contains the selected line. Let me just close the window. Finally, the navigator on top will only display a single line. 
It's also possible to see the entire tree. For this, click the icon here. So these are all of the decisions on the line on the river. After the action went check pet call on the flop and check check on the turn. You can mouse over any decision in the tree to get a quick view of the strategy. And left click to see that decision or action in the analysis tool. Should you want to zoom in or out, then you can use your mouse wheel. So, let's now take a look at the analysis system. The analysis system will show the GTR solution for the decision that has been selected in the navigator. The actions that are available within that decision are listed below the matrix. For this current decision, the active player has two possible options, bet or call. Here, bet is blue and call is green. And in the table, matrix and statistics, we can quickly see how the heads are distributed between these actions. In the first column in the table, all hands in the player's range are listed and ranked according to equity. Equity is displayed in the third column. The fourth column shows the distribution for each hand in the combos. So if we look at the 10-9 hands at the bottom, we see that they are roughly 3 quarters bet and 1 quarter call. They each have one combo, with specifically 0.73 combos bet and the rest being checked. To see the data in this column expressed as percentages, switch to the percentages tab. And we see that the ratio bet to check is indeed roughly 75 versus 25. To see the EVs of the individual hands, switch to the EV tab. And here we see that the overall EV of the 10-9 hands is 49.5, with both bet and check having the same EV of 49.5. Now actions having roughly the same EV is something that you'll see quite often in GTO solutions. This means that the solver is indifferent between the two actions. And it usually will mean that a mixed strategy between the two actions is recommended, where a single hand is sometimes bet and sometimes checked. Below the table, a summary is displayed. Here, we have the total number of combos in the table and their distribution of bet versus check. Currently, 44.1% of the range is bet, which is something that we can also see in the navigator. The equity of the entire range is roughly 51%, with the betting range having 54% equity and the checking range having 48% equity. And the overall EV is 23.46. The EV of the betting range is roughly 30, and the EV of checking is roughly 18. And here it states the number of unique items in the table. Now the entire range is visually ranked in the statistic below the table, where we can see the distribution into bet and check. And apparently, the strongest hands are mostly bet. I'll just mouse over them. And the table will adapt to show which hand is being moused over. So the strongest hands appear to be straights and sets, which should be bet almost 100% of the time. And when I mouse over any hand, Next to the statistics, some blue triangles will appear. So I'm mousing over 8 of hearts, 7 of hearts. And the statistics show that this is both a straight and a backdoor flush draw. I can also mouse over the statistic. When mousing for example over flush draw, the other statistics will show the overlap between them and that statistic. Let me just press F1 to switch back to combo mode. So apparently there's 14 combos of flush draws, and 5 of those flush draws are also a cut shot. If you want to take a closer look at which hands are in the overlap, then right click to fix the statistic. And I can now move my mouse away from it without deselecting it. And if I now mouse over cut shot, then the table will show which hands are both a flush draw and a cut shot. Let me just right click again to stop fixing the statistic. 
Another way of locking the table is to press F9. So if I mouse over AA, and if I now press F9, then the table will remain locked at AA, even if I move my mouse away. To see a specific action, click on the tab for this action here. Let's take a look at the bet action. So the table, matrix and statistics now give a visual representation of just the betting range. To go back to viewing the entire decision, click again on Entire Decision. Let's now take a look at the card removal toggle. With this toggle, you can set whether or not you want card removal to be included in the calculation of frequencies. Without card removal, all frequencies will simply be based on combos. With card removal, we will also take fill-in range into account. For example, if Villain holds lots of aces, then it will be less likely for us to hold an ace. If card removal is on, then this will be incorporated into the calculations. If card removal is off, then the frequencies will just be computed purely based on combos. If I turn this toggle on-off, then we can see that it makes a slight difference in how the frequencies are computed. Mostly the effect of card removal will be very small, but in some spots, with very narrow ranges, the effect can be significant. Finally for this section, I would like to discuss the output buttons here. The left icon will simply produce a text string with the current range for the active player. The second option will output all of the data that is available in the table. And you can export this to Excel if you want to look at the data in more detail. You can also copy a strategy to the clipboard here by clicking on Copy to Clipboard. If at some other decision you want to use this exact strategy again, let me just navigate to some other decision. Then again, just go to the icon, click on Paste from Clipboard and Accept. And the entire strategy has now been copied. Finally, we have the graph icon. And this will take us to another window, when we can sort and plot our data. Here we have a table with our hands, with our equity, EV, and betting and checking frequencies. Currently we're sorting by equity, and the graph reflects that by showing the hands in descending order of equity. We can also click above the table to sort by EV, or betting frequency, and the graph will adapt. We can also use this graph to plot properties against each other. Here, plotting equity versus EV is the most interesting. Let me just select equity and EV. The dots indicate individual hands. The horizontal axis is equity. And the vertical axis is EV. And the blue line indicates how much EV we would expect purely based on equity. Some hands will perform above this expectation, and some below it. The hands that perform better are usually strong draws, and made hands that are unlikely to be outdrawn. The hands below the blue line, that perform below their expectation, are usually made hands that are okay on the flop, but are likely to be outdrawn. For the final part of this video, on top we have a range versus range quick view, with an equity graph for both players. If you click on it, you will be brought to a sub-window with more details. It gives you a larger version of the equity graph, and if your tree has been solved, also an EV versus equity plot for both players. The buttons in the lower left will allow you to look at the entire decision, or to look at specific actions. And here we see the statistics for both players next to each other. The grey area indicates the difference in how often a player holds a certain hand. So apparently the in-position player holds a straight 11.7% of the time, whereas the out-of-position player only holds a straight 4.4% of the time. And there's also some toggles here to see this data in combos, and to see a relative display mode. So, that's it for the first part of this overview of the analysis system. The next part will focus on turn reports, locking and editing solutions, and the play against the solution feature.